This news program is proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and M Now Biscuits. PNG signs MOU with China. Lihir landowners investing for future. And PNG TA calls for teachers a tree peasant in Quimen. A very good evening. This is National MTV News. I'm Louis Mangu. Thank you for joining us. The Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi arrived at the Ejections International Airport yesterday afternoon together with his delegations. Upon receiving a welcome reception by PNG's Foreign Minister Justin Chichenko and his delegation, the two foreign ministers proceeded to Stanley Hotel where a number of memorandum of understanding was signed between PNG and China. <laughs> The two foreign ministers officiated the bilateral with a formal handshake in front of the delegations of both countries and members of the press, both foreign and local. The bilateral commenced at 5 p.m. behind closed door for an hour, then followed by the signing of the MOUs. The first document on 1 million USD disaster relief assistance was signed between Sir Anopala, minister responsible for planning and monitoring, and China's vice foreign minister, Suing Wing Dong. The second MOU on ICT cooperation was signed between Timothy Masiu, the minister responsible for ICT, and China's foreign minister, Suing Wing Dong. Third document on funding of 270,000 USD joint visibility study for free trade agreement was signed between Se Anopala and Tang Wengdong from the Chinese delegation. The fourth MOU, Protocols on Fight for Sanitary Requirements for Exported Coffee Beans, was signed between William Bando, the minister responsible for coffee and Chinese ambassador to PNG, Zhang Fanhua. Last MOU signed was the fight for sanitary requirements for export of unroasted cocoa beans, signed between John Boito, Minister Responsible for Agriculture, and Ambassador Zhang. Minister Tachenko said discussions on a number of bilateral issues were discussed behind the closed-door bilateral, to which the mutual interest between China and PNG has reached a positive understanding. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. The Minister for Foreign Affairs, Justin Chichenko, has made a serious statement during the PNG-China bilateral meeting yesterday, assuring the Foreign Minister for People's Republic of China of PNG's support to the One China policy. The minister stated this was a part of diplomatic establishment in 1976 between the two countries and will continue to maintain diplomatic relations. The Foreign Affairs Minister made this statement. I want to take this opportunity to reassure as well the Foreign Minister Wang Yi uh, of Papua New Guinea's support to the One China policy. Uh, since both countries established diplomatic relationships in 1976, which has been a cornerstone of the PNG-China relations and will be maintained uh, going forward now and into the future. Building on this sentiment, Minister Tetchenko expressed gratitude to China's continuous support to PNG and encouraged the Republic to maintain these relations. In that connection, I want to acknowledge and encourage China continuous support in its implementation of the Chinese government-funded projects in PNG that has greatly contributed towards our development aspirations. Minister Tetchenko also highlighted the trust and friendship between both countries and thanked the People's Republic of China's Foreign Minister Wan Yi for his presence in the country to strengthen these ties. China's Foreign Minister Wan Yi responded by assuring Minister Tetchenko that China's market will be open to PNG and all the people of PNG. Minister Wan also offered respect to those suffering from the natural disaster impacts around the country, offering assistance in cash, stating that more relief supplies will be delivered next week and hopes they reach the disaster-struck areas. 
Minister Wang Yi stressed that China supports independence of Pacific Island states and stated that their right to be independent should not be taken away. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. The beneficiaries of Lear Gold Mine from the Ward 15 have assigned their consent form with mineral resource Lear Capital Limited to release their 20 percent for MRL to manage on their behalf. After the landowners sign their consent form, their 20 percent beneficiaries will now be transferred to the Lear Investment Fund that was launched recently. The MRL team will go around the whole 15 wards on Lehir Island to allow landowners to fill their consent form for Lehir Investment Fund to manage their funds. This was further explained by MRL beneficiaries and stakeholders engagement manager. When we pay out our distribution yearly, our annual distribution, from that distribution for beneficiaries that actually choose or wish to um, save 20% for MRL to invest on their behalf, um, that 20% is retained by MRL. Now that 20% um, from each of the beneficiaries who have actually consented to MRL investing on their behalf will be transferred over to Lear Investment Fund. She said they have started off with Ward 3 and will continue till this month ends. So every single beneficiary that have consented to um, MRL retaining that 20% from their distribution payment um, will be what they're doing today, what the exercise that we're, we're currently running and will be doing in each of the wards is they will be pretty much consenting or giving MRL the authority to transfer that 20% to Lehir Investment Fund and for MRL to then invest on their behalf. She further stated that it is significant to do awareness before landowners signed their consent form. I think the really good thing about today and actually running an awareness before we actually get them to sign the authority forms and actually giving them their statement so they actually know how much they've saved to date. Um, and also what we've done is we actually have a system in place now, an app or an app, that you can actually go online. The beneficiaries can actually go online. As so long as they know their ID numbers, they can actually go online, punch that in and see for themselves how much they're actually saving. A Lihirian who spoke on behalf of the landowners said it is important for all Lihirian to understand this Lear Investment Fund and work together with MRL Capital for future benefits. My advice to other Lihirians is um, work with MRL, try and understand what it is, and then together we can see what we, the benefits that will come out from it for all of us. Over the years, MRL Capital Limited has undertaken investments that generate income and capital growth so that it can continue to provide benefits to the people of Lihir long after the closure of Lihir Gold Mine. Estagane, National MTV News, Lihir. The people of Ambaga Village under White Tree Trust Region of Community Mine Continuation Agreement in Western Province received two new teachers' houses for Ambaga Elementary School in North Flight District. This was made possible by Octedi Development Foundation in Kyunga for impact project delivery in the CMCA region of Western Province. Overjoyed Ambaga Elementary School children welcomed the invited guests and opening ceremony with traditional song. The community expressed such gratitude as delivering such facilities in a rural village is a challenge for the Ambaga community due to its remoteness and the cost of logistics involved. OTDF Chief Executive Officer Avini Vera has called on the people to take ownership of a such project delivered to them. Prime Minister no naka making work lang baga. Open member no naka making work lang baga. Community yet you must support him you yet na making work. OTDF, Mr. Tablo support him you taso. Me too me no naka na put him spade na tan him cement lo yah. No kan. You will make him. But me can work him. One of something me can make him, me make him. One of something member can make him, me make him. One of something prime minister can make him, me make him. But me community lo place, me must look at him project. Me must help him leader and do something. And most of the time, me like talking to you, you good for community. 
Over 75,000 Kina village development funds have been used for teachers' houses. Currently, 31 students have been enrolled for elementary education this academic year. Ambaga Elementary School head teacher took this opportunity to share the school's aspiration to introduce primary education. Ambaga Elementary School uh, teacher's house. And I want to announce today that these are messages from the uh, superintendent. Superintendent, yesterday, that um, we are lucky that by 2025 next year, there will be a launching of Ambaga Primary School. Thank you very much. The community members also witnessed the opening of New Church Building funded through Church Project under OTDF and Waritree Trust Region at the cost of 10,000 kina, where the Evangelical Church of PNG Building, now as of grid solar power panels, water tank and a proper pulpit. The lone Kiriwina Secondary School, located in Trobrian Islands, Milan Bay Province, has been without electricity for a month, disrupting the school's compulsory nighttime activities, such as study sessions and other essential educational programs that need electricity. In an interview, local school teacher Nathan Kabisawali said security of the students and teachers is also at risk due to law and order issues on the island. He said power was disconnected after the Kiriwina DDA genset encountered mechanical faults. However, despite KDDA restoring the genset, the school was denied electricity. Kabisawali stated, despite the school administration's continual request to restore power supply has gone in vain. The Kiriwina Secondary School community is urging the district authorities to quickly restore the power supply to the school. Following the natural disaster that devastated parts of the country last month, Many business owners in remote areas were left to fend for their establishment while praying for relief assistance to come in time. One such is Trout Farm and Lord's owner, Betty Higgins. Owning a trout farm and lodge at the base of scenic and remote Mount Wilhelm, the natural disaster that flooded Simbu province on the 12th of last month, devastating roads and bridges, had left Betty stranded in Mount Wilhelm with no alternative road or an airstrip to get in and out of her location. She expressed that all services have come to a halt. Due to this predicament, Betty revealed that all her bookings for Easter along with April were cancelled. She further mentioned that her fish farm is at risk of dying from starvation if she is delayed any longer getting supplies from town. The Prime Minister earlier this week announced funding for road work and clearing on Mount Wilhelm. Long year, long long, north side. Mount William Masop, we play releasing over 15 million kina based on assets on the works, like bricks, one them, road, one them. Hopefully, this will be done in time to save the livelihoods of farmers and business owners like Betty. Natasha Ovoy, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us. The Smart Start School promotion is back this year. Win yourself one of 1,000 consolation prizes valued at 50 kina each nationwide. And the school with the highest number of valid entries per region will win a 44,000 kina Smart Start School grant. Simply collect three empty packets of Smart Start breakfast biscuits. Put in an envelope with your name, school and number on the envelope and drop in an entry box at a participating school near you. Promo ends on the 22nd of April. Contact us on Facebook to register your school today. Terms and conditions apply.
by more, win more one time rules rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them grain rice. Cut them round in big bear roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write them name, none of them long you long backside long name. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by XC 500 kina. Week two draw, 1000 kina. Week three draw, 2000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5000 kina. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him more talk savvy. Tabs the conditions is tough. Remember the joy of playing with your toys as a child? At Money Plus, we believe that every small business deserves a chance to build and grow. That's why we offer asset financing. Now chance to building something new. To see a different point of view. Plus, Halivim, water belong you. At IPI Catering, we understand the intricacies of the environments in which we work, providing innovative, fresh, and creative catering solutions. Our experience and commitment is a winning combination, delivering great food anywhere and anytime. IPI Catering, part of the IPI Group of Companies. Introducing the new Bristol luncheon now comes in chicken and beef. Great choice to choose from with either a delicious chicken luncheon or a tasty beef luncheon meal. The beef luncheon is made with true Aussie beef and the chicken luncheon is far fresh with premium quality. Now you're cooking with the finest. Try our best of beef and chicken luncheon now. It's better, it's bester. Now available in stores. People have different views about this situation that we are currently going on. From the IEEC's perspective, these are challenges brought into the, our economy by what has been happening globally. You would have noted that the, the value of the kina has been sliding since last year. So this is one of the key determinants that also affects import costs of businesses in the country. So what we do is we try to make sure that the prices that business houses charges are not over and above or unnecessarily ripping off our consumers. That's on Monday night. You're watching National MTV News. The Papua New Guinea Teachers Association Acting General Manager Kingston Alu has called on the Treasury and Finance Department to pay the prolonged 3% increment for teachers. He made this call after intimidations made by teachers to go on strike if the government failed to fulfill its commitment signed through a memorandum of understanding last year in December. The MOA was a contract for a new salary deal that dated back to January 1, 2023 to 2025. This agreement will see a 3% pay rise for teachers. According to ALU, the MOA is a legal document after all parties have signed and which has been registered with the industrial registrar. That agreement is a legal document. It is now before the government, and the government will make its commitment to look for funds to pay the teachers. So they shouldn't be jumping up and down uh, because there is no payment coming yet. The 3% salary increment is not paid yet. Uh, some teachers, they received some adjustment, and that adjustment is not part of the 3% agreement. That adjustment was a structural change from Teaching Service Commission's structural review of the positions. He said rumours have been heard of teachers threatening to go on strike as they have not been paid the 3% increment as agreed by the TSC and PNGTA with the Department of Personal Management. From the office of PNGTA, we advise that our teachers should be patient. They must be patient and be more rational in their thinking and decision making. The most important thing is that the agreement or the MOA, the Memorandum of Understanding, was already signed between Papua New Guinea Teachers Association, Teaching Service Commission 
and Department of Personal Management. Gladys Gila, National MTV News. The University of Technology is yet to address the issues within the School of Civil Engineering, resulting in students missing three weeks of classes. This was alluded by the Student Representative Council President, Christopher Edegu, recently at the school campus. The issues highlighted in a statement released by the Students' Representative Senate are engineering drawing and designs not captured in the civil engineering syllabus, irrelevant drawing software being used for computer-aided design class, and lecturers not teaching within their areas of expertise. Reflecting on his three years of schooling experience, McBride Matai, the Student Representative Senate for Civil Engineering Department, further highlights some of the students' concerns. I just want to remind every one of you that is watching, if mediocrity is prevailing in the Department of Civil Engineering, there is no future for Papua New Guinea. If the Civil Engineering Department is collapsing, I don't see a future for Papua New Guinea. That is why on the verge of leaving this university in my final year, I just make sure that things must be handled, addressed. So the reason behind all this is we have incompetent people in our administration, civil engineering department. That we, without fear or favor, I've promised as a student leader to speak up what is true. The president of Civil Engineering Student and Staff Association, Junia E. Hania, said before boycotting classes and reaching out to the media, the student body has been reaching out to the administration to address these issues. However, their efforts were unsuccessful. Before the boycott even happened, there is a weekly meetings that are called for in the, our department, the student staff liaison committee meeting. So these issues, if one were to check the meeting minutes, were raised consistently to our administration within the department. We've been raising it through our class reps, to our student leaders, raising it constantly. To date, for, for example, my student leader here who's in final year, he's been raising it since first year, since 2021. So up to now, we've reached a point where the normal process of getting things done, of dialogue, of sharing information to see how we can improve as a department, as a university, has not been achieving any results. We've sat down with the administration, put forward our proposals, but nothing has been forthcoming. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. The teaching and learning at the St. Matthias Second Kun Primary School on Liir Island has improved since last year after the opening of the new six-in-one classroom built by MRL Capital Limited. This was confirmed by a senior teacher, Channel Obed. St. Matthias Second Kun Primary School is among the four primary schools on Lihir Island that has new classroom. It's built by MRL Capital Limited. The school has more than 800 students population with 19 teachers have seen much improvements in terms of teaching, learning and the students' behavior when using the new classroom. This was stressed by Mr. Obeb. The range and the Position out the province of Gada, second one, and we've been, we've been collab eight, eight per place we went up last year. And it was a very big a jump for the kids last year. He confirmed that for the first time, more than 50 students made it to grade nine last year. He me sent him to a behavior of the attitude towards study and it's only been improved to long and building. Building has been working well, only, only developed to low mind. However, with the increasing number of students coming into the school every year, they still need one more classroom and two more teachers' houses. Still have a lot of needs that we, we problems that we are encountering. We play in the uh, We have nine 
19 teachers, but we have only 11 houses. This newly built classroom for grade 7 and 8 was built by MRL Capital Limited at the cost of around 1.7 million kina. Esther Gane, National MTV News, Lear. The MRL Capital Limited has announced its first two recipients of the secondary scholarship program who will commence their studies in 2025. This newly introduced scholarship provides Lyrian students the opportunity to study abroad from years 10 to 12 at St. Peter's Lutheran College in Brisbane, Australia. After a stringent application and waiting process in collaboration with St. Peter's Lutheran College in Brisbane, the two awardees from Lehir International School were selected based on eligibility and academic merit who officially signed their offer letter. The female awardee Katy Kamong said she wants to study biology and this is an opportunity for her to study hard and come back with flying colours. I want to study I'm biology. I want to become a marine biologist and come back and, yeah, like work as a marine biologist on the island. The other awardee, Thomas Toisat, says this is an opportunity for him to get quality education. Well, I'd like to study um, economist and to economics, and um, my aim is to at least go get a proper quality education and come back and help my community. Um, alongside with MRL. On behalf of the parents, the mother acknowledges MRL Capital and Lihir International School for this scholarship program. Thank you, Lord, MRL, too long. This is a program helping me play with Papa and Mama Lihir. And first uh, uh, program, I come up, Lord, MRL became to play with me, Lihir International School, and to play with Papa and Mama Lihir. MRLC's Executive Officer and Managing Director, Lawrence Rousin, said the intention of this scholarship is to help students get quality education abroad so that they can come back and contribute meaningfully to the community. We want to sponsor the Hirians who can go and graduate, come back, work wherever they are, gain the experience, and we need a lot of educated Lahirians to come back and contribute in whatever way they can to assist in whatever that we want happening here on, on Lahir. The total cost for sponsoring these two students is about half a million kina, and MRLC is looking forward to send more students in the years to come. Esther Gane, National MTV News, Lahir. Papua New Guinea and Japan scholar Augustin Mara during the JICA scholar presentation event held recently shared off his thesis research he had undertook at the Naruto University of Education in Japan. Mr. Mara, who is from Western Highlands province, expressed gratitude towards JICA for a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to make his dream a reality. During the presentation event, he presented his pre-service teacher's thesis. I was the first person among the 2021 vets to leave the country and to go to Japan. And I was the last person to complete my studies and come, come back to Papua with IIM. So I consider myself as uh, one of the privileged scholars. Mr. Mara's pre-service teacher's thesis on typical misconception and difficulties in the decimal number system with four arithmetic operations showed and proved to be a case where teachers attending training colleges in Papua New Guinea have faced. National MTV News continues after the break. Stay with us.
Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck. Like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too. Like working hard and keeping my super with Nasfan. They looked after it for me. Which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. Hamamas One Time Telecom's Goodplum Mobile Data Plans. With eight exclusive mobile data plans to choose from, select a plan that best suits your budget. You can purchase a plan for as low as 3 kina for 1 gigabyte of data valid for 24 hours. Or receive 130 gigabyte of data valid for 30 days for only 150 kina. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Power energy drink. Feel the power. Buy more, win more one time rules rise. We have money belum three hundred thousand kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them grain rice. Cut them round in big pair roots logo on top long front long back rice. Now write the name Nana Mas long long back side long M. Drop them inside long entry box long store. Week one draw, one one winner by exceed 500 kina. Week two draw, 1000 kina. Week three draw, 2000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5000 kina. Second roots rice Facebook page long kiss in more talk seven. Terms the conditions is start. The stage is set for the women's Isuzu T20 Smash. Round 1, Kasuaris take on Mudman tomorrow at 10 a.m. And Mariners vs Black Bears at 2 p.m. The women's Isuzu T20 Smash. Live only on your number one to watch, MTV. Welcome to the Eat Smart campaign with Chef Jules Henao, where we meet the true heroes, the sons and the daughters of our soil. Our farmers, the very people that help bring food to our tables. How good does this get? Unlocking the potential of agriculture, Chef Jules Henao will cook healthy, nutritious meals with the produce grown by our champions. This is the Eat Smart Campaign. 8.30 p.m. tonight, right here on the number one to watch, MTV. You're watching National MTV News. With preparations for the PNG for Christ program nearing its apex in the country, several churches in Port Mosby, northwest today of the Seventh Day Adventist, carried out their rally for the program. One starts being the Waigani Seventh Day Adventist Church. Senior Elder for Waigani Seventh Day Adventist Church, Alan Kamale, gave this update on what took place this morning. Uh, this morning, this, this is the Waigani Seventh-day Adventist Church uh, doing a march to launch the PNG for Christ program 2024. Uh, we started from the Parliament House and uh, we, we put together all our young people in their uniforms, as you can see in the background. Uh, they started marching from the Parliament House with the police escort. We worked through Waigani traffic lights and up here to Somara Institute of Leadership and Governance where we have the state set up for the program, two weeks program. Advising that this morning's participation saw more than 200 members of the church. The senior elder mentions pre-evangelism activities carried out by the church in the build-up to the PNG for Christ program. Yeah, there's a number of uh, pre-evangelism activities we say we, that we, we were doing. The major one was the health evangelism that we were doing. We have quite a number of health professionals in our church, uh, doctors and nurses, so we basically engage them to go out to the communities to do um, health evangelism. Uh, for example, we did one down at uh, Sabuya village, just uh, about one or two kilometers out of uh, Gaire village. The senior elder extends this invitation to residents along the Waigani area. I just want to invite the communities around here in Waigani area from Ka Memorial School to Tokarara to NCC Valley to Waigani to Telecom Compound to Tokarara. If you are in this neighborhood, please, we, we've got a site here at uh, Silak campus here, so I want, I want to invite you to come here. 
The PNG for Christ program will kick off from the 26th of this month to May 12th at around 2,000 different sites in Papua New Guinea with a delegate of preachers from the U.S. alongside the Seventh-day Adventist Church President, Pastor Ted Wilson, to arrive in Papua New Guinea on the 25th of this month at the Jacksons International Airport. Natasha Ovoy National, MTV News. Hundreds of students from schools all around the National Capital District and Central Province flocked into the Reverend Sioni Kami Memorial United Church to be part of the Scripture Union PNG All Night Prayer. The program commenced at 5 p.m. on Friday evening through to 7 a.m. on Saturday. This all-night prayer program was hosted by Scripture Union PNG with the theme of consistent prayer. The Scripture Union National Director Jacob Vavine shares more on this. On the weekend was the first for this year, and our theme being persistence or persistence in prayer. Uh, and what we want to encourage the young people is that you know to grow up with the habit of praying. And where this our theme Colossians chapter four verse two. It says, continue steadfastly in prayer, being watchful in it with thanksgiving. Students filled the church to its brim as the prayer started as early as 6.30 p.m. on Friday evening. Joyous singing and dancing proceeded, followed by testimonies and life struggles these young ones face in school and at home to encourage each other. Director Vavine further shares. The scripture in emphasizes says that uh, we get them to uh, get to know how to pray uh, on their own and <clears throat> some some kids come from homes that that you know uh, that the whole family that don't go to church or don't belong to a church and scripture union is where uh, they get to have that uh, opportunity and uh, while they are young we teach them so we teach them how to pray and uh, the guidelines that are there uh, from the word of god and uh, they grow old knowing how to pray and they grow, grow old having the passion to pray. Pastors from several churches were present to share the word of God to the students to encourage and also pray for those who needed special prayers. The prayer ended early on Saturday morning with a walk from Five Mile to Hilton Hotel, then back to Elamari International School where the program ended. Scripture Union PNG's all-night prayers are held at the beginning, middle and end of every year. Francisca Anania, National MTV News. Evangelical Brotherhood Church from Western Highlands, Southern Highlands and Jiwaka provinces are now at, now at means to celebrate the church's 50th anniversary. German-based senior missionary Daniel Glossen, when sharing the church's history, highlighted that many countries experience disorder because they forget the importance of the gospel of Jesus Christ, encouraging that PNG embrace godly principles to progress as a country. The 50th celebration program saw an estimated 20,000 plus men, women and children in participation begin yesterday and ended today. Youths from Kuanambao community in Genawauga LLG, Keruwagi district, surrendered gas bottles used for producing illicit ombru to police at Migendi Ducks Market. Kunambao community leader and former member for Kerawagi, Kamelus Dagama, spoke highly of the youths that took part in the grand gesture, claiming it as a positive way forward for the community. He said, youths, as our future leaders, have to be respected as well as supported in government programs as well as in the family setting. He further encouraged the youth participation in the SME space and agriculture. He went on to appeal to his Migendi community, especially the youths, to respect the general public, public servants and public properties. A 20-foot container is sealed and destined for Kundiawa, Simbu province this week, containing medical and educational resources for Kumura Foundation in Bundi, Medeng and schools in Simbu province. 
These resources for 10 organizations in PNG, including Kumura Foundation, were donated by Project Iyumi in Brisbane, Australia. The shares for Kumura Foundation and Simbu Schools include an additional 100 cartons of library books that were donated by Book for PNG Kids. Meanwhile, Mapai Transport stepped in by donating a 20-foot container to pack and transport the resources to Kundiawa next week for deliveries. Kumura Foundation founder Vincent Kumura said the medical resources for the foundation will be used at the 10 community health post of Bundi currently under construction. Mr. Kumura said it is a difficult time now, but such great community effort shows the resilience of our PNG organizations and businesses in supporting humanitarian causes in PNG. It's a great community effort uh, trying to make Papua New Guinea a better place. I want to sincerely thank um, Project Yumi and the hardworking team from Brisbane for packing all these donated items for 10 organizations at PNG. Also, um, Sir Brando Foundation for helping with the logistics and shipping the container up. These resources will no doubt impact thousands of ordinary rural lives and help improve the health and educational outcomes for our children in rural areas. Gladys Gila, National MTV News. Following a viral remark made by the U.S. President Joe Biden on cannibalism aspect in Papua New Guinea, Prime Minister James Marape responded this morning during a press conference. At an event held this morning, Prime Minister Marape gave his response to the claims and remarks made that may have angered some Papua New Guineans. Sometimes our leaders speak off the cuff. James Marape is a leader that is known to also speak off the cuff. And so we got to have the ability to, uh, uh, you know, tol to tolerate uh, different uh, diversity of uh, uh, utterance. And President Biden, uh, is, uh, sometimes he's uh, also known for speaking off the cuff like me. He said he's awaiting the U.S. Embassy office, Joe Biden's office, or himself to get back to him. I am yet to confirm uh, from his office or himself or his embassy as to what he spoke about. Prime Minister Marape further stated that the remarks made by Joe Biden may not be intentional and appealed to Papua New Guineans to be bigger than a line of phrase stated. I don't personally as Prime Minister uh, of our country, I want to encourage our people to, uh, to sometimes have uh, a light moment in, in the way we see things. Uh, President Biden's remarks, uh, uh, in my view, if he, if he did, uh, did after this one, uh, don't come from a deep place in his heart. Uh, you know, in every moment of exchanges, sometimes you have loose words. Uh, I've met him uh, in more than four occasions today. In every time I've met him, he's, he's always had a warm regards to Papua New Guinea. And he's also always spoken uh, his uncle that possibly uh, they, they, they uh, do not know exactly where his body is rested, but has, uh, has lost life somewhere in our space, in our territory, and uh, he's always made mention of his uncle. Uh, never in those moments he spoke uh, of PNG as cannibals, uh, and I just want to encourage us. We yet to get affirmation from White House as to what exactly he, he uh, mentioned, but I, wa I want to say, Sometimes off the cuff remarks uh, are taken out of context in most instances. So let's let's uh, let's give it a go. Uh, then a much much more deeper values in relationship than one statement, one one word, one punchline. Uh, USA, uh, just like China, just like Australia, uh, just like many nations, are good relationships that uh, PNG have with them, and our goodness found ways. One blurry moment. Malinta Yopolo, National MTV News. National MTV News continues after the break with Trukai Sports. Stay with us.
Accept the challenge. Choose PNG's favorite purified bottled water. True True Wara, 100% PNG made. Proudly bottled by Paradise Foods. As PNG's only ISO accredited bulk haulage operator, IPI Transport guarantees the delivery of your critical cargo. Equipped with state-of-the-art GPS tracking systems and backed by an experienced team, you can rely on IPI Transport, part of the IPI group of companies. Top up now with Telecom's Good Plum More Bundles. Subscribe to any of Telecom's More Bundle plans, ranging from 3 kina to 75 kina to enjoy unlimited on net calls. More SMS, more data with increased off net minutes. Choose from 8 exclusive plans, packed with more value to experience seamless communication with your family and friends. Telecom, connecting you anywhere, anytime. Terms and conditions apply. Dear son, you ask me how I live such a good life. Yes, I've had some good luck, like the day I met your mother. But it wasn't always that way. I've made some good choices too, like working hard and keeping my super with NAS fun. They looked after it for me, which meant I could concentrate on looking after my family. Living each day, knowing that when the time came, I'd be ready for tomorrow. Love, Dad. Buy more, win more one time roots rise. We don't have money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots medium grain rice. Cut them round in big bear roots logo on top of front and back rice. Now write the name, none of us long you long backside long air. Drop them inside long empty box long store. Week one throw, one one winner by exceed 500 kina. Week two throw, 1,000 kina. Week three throw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four throw, 5,000 kira. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, don't kiss him, more talk savvy. Tell the conditions is tough. How would you describe your mother? My mom is beautiful. She is strong like the woman. I love my mom because she always takes care of me. My mom, she's so patient and loving. I feel she's always around. Gary, she works so hard and always works the best for me. She's soft like her love. My mom is everything. And I don't know what I'd do without her. Softland, fragrance of a mother's love. Hi, I'm Belinda Koyati. Join me weekly 7 p.m. on Tuesday nights on House and Home as we talk pet care, home improvement ideas, DIY projects, pick a book discussions, and hard work man. That's House and Home 7 p.m. Tuesday nights, only on your number one to watch MTV. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Tukai Sports. Coming back from a five wicket loss against Kasawaris yesterday, Pay Better Black Bash has registered their first win against Telecom Madmen at Amini Park today. The Black Bears chased their target easily with the pay set by Captain Pauke Siaka, scoring 22 runs, Eli Johnson 13 runs and Hanetau with 12 runs. <laughs> pay Better Black Bears assistant coach and Garamuts coach Jack Kevere told Chukai Sports today that the team executed the gameplay well. I think yesterday, I'd say we our, our players betted really well. Uh, but, you know, we wanted... The, the whole plan for today was just simple. We just have to be one ball better. And we, we had a few KPS that we said that we wanted, wanted to achieve yesterday. And we didn't achieve that. We didn't tick all our boxes. Uh, actually, we didn't tick any boxes yesterday. So today, uh, and it showed the result yesterday that we lost. And today, obviously, we ticked a lot of boxes, which, which is good, good signs. Uh, going through the tournament and hopefully we'll get out, uh, get out better in the next game as well.
Kever said the team will work on mistakes and is looking forward for the next game. Our bowlers did really well, but the highlight was our fielding. We did. Uh, we dropped a lot of catches yesterday, but today we didn't drop any. Plus, we got I think, two or three runouts, which is very, very vital in T20 cricket. And uh, I think our, the highlight was the the fielding. Obviously, they batted really well in their first game, the Mad Men. Uh, they are. Their batsmen from overseas scored 64, and today, because of our feeling, we had to run here out, plus get few vital runouts as well. Uh, that sort of gave us a boost leading into our batting. Simple, we just play in blocks, we win every block, we should we tick those boxes in every block, we should be fine. So today is again another new game, and we had our KPS, few KPS boxes that we needed to tick. And obviously we took those, and as a result, we ended up, you know, being in the winning side. So hopefully in the next game, we then have those boxes, and we can take them off. We should be okay. Jonathan Sibona, Chukai Sports. Today saw a trailing match between Moniplus Vipers and Asila Wagetumbe in the round two of the PNG National Rugby League competition in Port Mosby. The Moniplus Vipers gaining momentum in the first half of the game managed to maintain the lead, defeating Asila Wagetumbe 20 points to 12 at full time. Lamana Dockers has defeated Gareka Bombers 32 to 12 in the round one game of the Port Mosby AFL competition at Colts Oval in Port Mosby today. Lamana Dockers coach Elvis Bai said the team worked hard during training. The training days, no this days, no this days. So training really come up good, uh, very. Only come good, lo, training, the full team for training today, they prepare, lo, just like game today. So the boys uh, perform well today. Bai said the game was tough in the opening half, but the team managed to pick up in the second half to win the game. I think from the back line centers and forwards, they played their best today. So, so outcome, lo, just like the boys won today, so 32-12 beat the uh, Gareka Bombas. Jonathan Sibona, Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports continues after the break. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. What a great privilege it is to speak to you in the vast and wonderful country of Papua New Guinea from the precious Word of God. It will be my privilege to open the pages of this precious book each day as we look at how God can affect your life, how He can bring new energy, spiritual energy, helping you physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually as Jesus did to uncover the beautiful truths of Scripture. God's intent for each of you is to be a great witness to others of what God is doing in your life. All across Papua New Guinea, we have over 2,000 sites that are proclaiming God's precious truth from the Word of God. I hope you will visit one of them and be inspired by what God will do through the Holy Spirit to touch your life so that you too can become a witness for Him in understanding His purpose for your life in sharing with others. Be on board this revolution. Introducing our new range of devices and giveaway frenzy. 
buy a device and get a free boombox and enjoy seven days of free streaming to MGEMS. But that's not all. You will also receive 5 gigabytes every month for the next six months. That's whooping 30 gigabytes of data. Don't miss this extraordinary opportunity. Head to your nearest telecom retail outlet to grab one today. Terms and conditions supply. It's almost time to crunch a month on Kai Time. If you're a warrior in your kitchen and want to be featured in the show, send us your video. The sky's the limit. It could be a family recipe. It could be a secret recipe. It could even be a simple recipe, just adding a few touches to make it special. Send us a video of your best recipe creation today and we'll feature it on Kai Time. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have money belum 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with grain rice. Cut them round in big bear roots logo on top of front and back rice. Now write the name, none of them you long backside long air. Drop them inside long entry box, long store. Week one draw, one one winner by 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kina. Second roots rice Facebook page, long kiss in more talk seven. Tabs the conditions is tough. You're watching True Kai Sports. Excitement soared at the National Football Stadium today as the semifinals of the National Capital District Football Association tournament unfolded, showcasing trailing matchups and fierce competition. In the women's division, spectators were treated to a showdown between Valley Strikers FC and Allies FC, while Ghetto FC clashed with Allies FC in another gripping encounter. The atmosphere crackled with anticipation as these talented teams battled for a sport in the grand final. Meanwhile, in the men's division, Matala FC faced off against Pom Southside FC in a heated contest, while Hekari United FC took on Komara FC in a match brimming with intensity. When the dust is settled and the scores tallied, the triumphant teams will move into their sports and compete in the highly anticipated grand final. James Gukan, Trukai Sports. The fervor of rugby league took center stage today at the Coney Tigers Oval in the nation's capital as the Mosby Northwest Rugby League continued its round games, treating fans to a day filled with accelerating matches. Kicking off the accent pack day, where three under-20 clashes, its promising intense battles and exciting plays. The Gerhu Ravens squared off against the Capital Bears in a tightly contested match that saw the Ravens emerge victorious with a decisive field goal securing a hard-fought 1-0 win. In the second under-20 showdown, the Kagua Woodmen locked horns with the Marane k Reds in a thrilling encounter. Ultimately, it was the Kagua Woodmen who prevailed with a narrow 7-6 victory courtesy of a field goal. Wrapping up the under-20 fixtures was a clash between the TI Island Sharks and the QPR Golf Panthers, adding another layer of excitement to an already electrifying day of rugby league action. Transitioning to the A-grade matches, the crowd was treated to an intense battle between Odash Magorima United 2 and TS Giung Fox in the first fixture. The competition remained fierce throughout, setting the stage for an enthralling showdown that followed by four more A-grade matches. James Gukan, Trukai Sports. That ends Trukai Sports. The Money Plus Weather Report is next. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Trukai Sports. Buy more, win more, one time rules rise. We have half money mark below 300,000 kira. No can miss out. Buy 10 kg roots with them grain rice. Cut them round in big bear roots logo on top long front and back rice. Now write the name, none of them you long backside long air. Drop them inside long entry box, long store. Week one draw, one one winner by 500 kina. Week two draw, 1,000 kina. Week three draw, 2,000 kina. Now long week four draw, 5,000 kira. Second Roots Rice Facebook page, long kiss in more talk seven. Tabs the conditions is tough.
challenge. Choose PNG's favorite purified bottled water. True True Wara, 100% PNG made. Proudly bottled by Paradise Foods. The Geoscience Exploration and Extraction Conference 2024. This conference aims to promote the diverse and rich geo-resources sector of PNG whilst addressing key issues facing the sector. Featuring presentation, facilitate panel discussions and poster sessions. There will be representation from the resource industry, government, community and academia or research institutions. With various topics to cover, the Geoscience Exploration and Extraction Organizing Committee of the Mineral Resource Authority is hereby calling for papers from interested individuals, geoscientists, scientific tertiary institutions, government agencies, and other local international parties to submit abstracts for consideration. The due date for submission is April 30th, 2024. Abstracts must be emailed to infog24 at mra.gov.pg. Welcome to the Eat Smart campaign with Chef Jules Henao, where we meet the true heroes, the sons and the daughters of our soil, our farmers, the very people that help bring food to our tables. How good does this get? Unlocking the potential of agriculture, Chef Jules Hennel will cook healthy, nutritious meals with the produce grown by our champions. This is the Eat Smart campaign. 8.30 p.m. tonight, right here on the number one to watch, MTV. The stage is set for the women's Isuzu T20 Smash. Round one, Kasuaris take on Mudman tomorrow at 10 a.m. And Mariners vs. Black Bears at 2 p.m. The women's Isuzu T20 Smash. Live only on your number one to watch, MTV. <laughs> This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. The weather forecast for the next 24 hours. In southern region, Port Mosby City partly cloudy with possible few showers. Daru partly cloudy. Kerema partly cloudy and mostly fine. Alotau partly cloudy with possible brief showers. And Drizels, Popondeta partly cloudy with possible brief showers. In Mumasi region, Lay City, partly cloudy and mostly fine. Medang, Wewek and Vanimo, mostly fine. In the New Guinea Island region, Loringao, mostly fine. Kavieng, Kokopo and Rabaul, mostly fine and partly cloudy. Kimbe and Buka, partly cloudy with possible brief showers. In the islands region, Mount Agin City, partly cloudy. Goroka, Bans and Kundiawa, partly cloudy with few showers. Mendi, Tari and Wabeg, partly cloudy with few shouts. The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that wraps up the news, sports and weather for Sunday, the 21st of April, 2024. From all of us here, pleasant viewing. Good night. This news program was proudly brought to you by Smart Start Breakfast Biscuits and Gold Nuggets.